Sharpa just officially announced their robotic hand out in production. You can see it's crazy. It has lots of mechanical gears all working together to allow the movements of its fingers. We're going to be talking about exactly how it works and dive into the details of the mechanisms. All right, let's get started. By the way, if you're new here, my name is Kevin. I've been doing robotics and AI for 10 plus years and have lots of resources on my channel, so make sure to check it out. I also have courses on robotics and AI, as well as robotics projects to boost your resume. So make sure to check it out at kevinwoodrobotics.com. So the first 21 degrees of freedom of this hand is right here. You can see each finger. What we have here is one degree of freedom, two degree of freedom, three degree of freedom, and then another one that tilts uh, right and left. So for each finger, we have four degrees of, uh, four degrees of freedom. So we have a uh, total of five fingers here. So we have five times four, we get 20 degrees of freedom. And this thumb here, we have a extra degree of freedom because this one has two D of here. So this is how we get the extra plus one, making it 21. And there's actually a 22nd degree of freedom. And this 22nd one here is this inward rotation. This inward rotation is coming from this right here. If you look closely, we see that there's an axis here. So that allows the hand to do this sort of uh, pivot motion with some linkages. But ultimately, you see that um, this arm here is kind of moving back and forth in this direction. So it's a thumb motion that lets you swing here. So there's a couple of linkages working together to allow that motion, but you could see it in the video that I showed earlier. So all of these different mechanical parts are working together. It's quite crazy how many different gears are all packed into this hand. It's kind of like a very advanced watch because when you think of watches, there's many little gears. But you can see right here, where there's a really interesting mechanism. You can see here, most of this degree of freedom here is about this axis. But if we look closely into this area, what we actually notice is that at the bottom, we have a bevel gear, but surprisingly, we see a gear right here that's a spur gear. So it's a very non-traditional type of design. Usually you see two bevel gears uh, back to back, but here you see that this seems to be meshing somehow, which is not very typical. And you can see right here, this is another view. Maybe you can see closely here, it seems like it's engaging. So some of the views, it seems like it is, but um, typically when you see bevel gears, they shouldn't be meshing. So I'm not exactly sure how they're doing that, but it seems like some of the teeth for these right here appears to be like a spur gear. So here, right here is another exploded view of the hand. You can see some of the details here, but this right here, this is the main finger. You can see that this is the main axis of rotation and you see all these little gears here working together. There's also another center shaft here that I think is converting some of the uh, rotation, probably because you have the part of the finger on the bottom is, you know, this finger here is has some rotation. So it seems like they're transmitting some of the, there might be some motors all the way in the back and they're transmitting that to some of the rotation upwards. So I think that's what's happening. And here's another view of the gears here. You can see how they're all arranged. And here's yet another view. But if you look closely here, you can see this is the, there's an axis of direction in this way. There's one outside of the plane and then you have one vertical. So that's why I suspect that some of the transmission is getting passed on because if you look closely here, you don't really see any motors hidden here. So that's what makes me think that some of it is um, being transmitted across the finger. And here's yet another view. You can see that uh, typically you can see the bottom section and top section are very similar. So I think they're repeating some of that mechanism between the joints. And here's another view too. Again, you can see some of the designs here. And here's another view. But another thing special about this hand is that they have a uh, finger tactile sensing here. So you can see this is the breakdown of all the sensors that allow that to happen. So I'm excited to see if they have a patent release out so we could dig more details into this hand design. But if you found this video helpful, give a like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.